However, at the end of the day, what this is really about is this is about helping investors create additional streams of income in their lives, which everyone, whether they're an investor now, a professional investor, or they're just someone, you know, working minimum wage needs to be thinking about building multiple streams of income. And that's truly where my passion lies. Welcome to this edition of Retire Well, Retire Happy with your host, Annie Nelson, an Australian look at reinventing yourself for retirement and getting yourself retirement ready. It's always fascinating getting to know what people are getting up to in retirement, how they are supplementing their incomes, pensions, where they have chosen to live, how they are filling their time, what charities they are supporting and what adventures they are having. And we'll also talk to experts in their fields, including investing, health, estate planning, financial advisors, and seniors health care. Hi, welcome back to the Retire Well, Retire Happy Show with your host, Annie Nelson. And today, my special guest is Martin Sines from Bequest Funds. Martin is the managing partner and is renowned as a thought leader in the mortgage note investment industry. Martin is generous with his first-hand expertise to the benefit of his many clients and followers. Bequest Funds has the dual purpose of helping investors grow their wealth and helping mortgage borrowers stay in their homes. Martin has owned and operated many successful companies prior to launching this business, a successful entrepreneur and a real estate investor for 15 years. It's very interesting to have you on the show and you are happily married with four children and live in the DC area I see and you enjoy nature and the the park so welcome to the show thank you thank you I got to update that because it's uh, 17 years now of self-employment and we moved to Florida so we're in Sarasota Florida (laughs) but other than that the rest is true So you're a successful entrepreneur, and I see that you've written many books. So congratulations on that. Thank you. So could you help us understand where you've come from? You've gone from many successful companies, and you've set yourself up well into retirement, and you're still going, and you've got many streams of income, I gather, helping you for when you do decide to retire. But can we start with a bit of history about your different businesses that you've had and how you've been able to set yourself up for retirement? Sure. So my wife and I founded a government contracting company in 2005 after getting fired from a corporate job in 2004. You know, that really kind of launched our entrepreneurial journey and my wife and I, we decided at that point that we needed to just be in business for ourselves and control our own destiny. And so what we found through the course of time is a lot of hard work through uh, kind of setting up your own company and uh, operating as a small business. So through the uh, trials of that all, we had managed to be profitable on year three And we started buying real estate, both on the commercial and residential side. We're still involved that way. However, you know, things really didn't turn for myself until 2013, whereby I got into the mortgage loan industry and started buying mortgages backed by U.S. real estate housing and started doing that on a larger level. And, um, Really that, you know, I I learned a lot through the course of that. And uh, the primary thing is that I've been able to work with over a thousand homeowners personally and help them stay in their homes with creating creative payment plans. Wow, that's an impressive number of people that you've helped, a thousand. How did you manage it all? It just, Mm -hmm. um, you'll have to tell us more. Yeah. So, you know, through systems, through team building, you know, hiring employees, I think that's always critical for any business to be successful. They need to hire a team in place. I know there's, you know, a lot, a lot of folks that talk about or kind of glamorize the idea of solopreneurism and, you know, working for yourself by yourself. 
and that that will take you to some level of success. But to have true wealth building, true uh, success as a as a and build a world class business operation, you need employees and you need a team in place and that you can manage and lead and grow on a, on a daily basis. So that's what I've been able to do. Now, we own well over a thousand loans now in BQuest funds. And so what we did is we kind of shifted the model. I took on a partner in 2017 and um, we took on a model whereby we were creating a legacy for ourselves and our investors. We created BQuest funds as a result last year and uh, it's set up as an income fund whereby we manage these performing mortgages that are paying us on a monthly basis. And we in turn pay our investors on a monthly basis at an eight or 9% preferred annual return. So it's, um, is a way of um, you know folks putting in money and they receive monthly income to go and pay their monthly expenses or kind of meet whatever financial aspirations they have for themselves. Mm. It's interesting that you've been able to manage to build a business based on something that you've come across to personally benefit. And now you've expanded that and includes investors. So can we just learn a little bit and understand what this is about? But what is Note Investing? Because this is what this is based on. Yeah, sure. So if you take an individual or a family and they want to purchase a home, they're going to walk into the local bank or contact a mortgage lender and they're going to apply for a mortgage. And assuming everything gets underwritten and they get approved, then they're going to sign a few documents at the closing table, one being a promissory note to borrow X amount of money and pay it back with a given set of terms in place. And the other document is going to be a mortgage or a deed of trust that's going to tie that promise to the property, which is the collateral in this case. And so a portion of these mortgages that get originated go into default, whereby the homeowner stops making payments, they lose their job or, or something happens health-wise or they get divorced. And so they have a moment in time where they're unable to make their payments and the banks will sell these mortgages in, into what's called the secondary mortgage market space in the U.S. And so companies like myself will purchase these loans, will work with the homeowners, create you know payment plans with them, help them get back on their feet. Because oftentimes after you know, a few years, the person may have remarried you know, they've gotten a job back somewhere, somehow, you know, their health is recovered. So they're back to where they need to be to be able to handle this obligation. And so uh, my company, we buy these mortgages both in a distressed state, and we also purchase them in a performing state whereby the borrower has been making their payments on an ongoing basis. So we'll buy these mortgages into our income fund, these performing mortgages at a 12 to 14% yield. And we'll pay our investors an eight or nine percent preferred return based on the option they select with our income fund. So we're able to operate the fund without any fees charged to the investor. However, at the end of the day, what this is really about is this is about helping investors create additional streams of income in their lives, which everyone, whether they're an investor now, a professional investor or they're just someone, you know, working minimum wage needs to be thinking about building multiple streams of income. Mm -hmm. And that's truly where my passion lies. Right. Well, that's very interesting. Thanks for explaining that. So I assume when the banks sell these into the secondary mortgage, they're selling them at a discount. I mean, there must be some incentive Mm -hmm. in there. Sure, absolutely. So, yep, they'll sell them at a discount. So if you take a mortgage that, you know, at one point there was a blemish and the borrower stopped paying and then they got back on their feet and they've been paying a few years since and everything's hunky dory with this loan, Bequest funds, my income fund will purchase that loan at a 12 to 14% yield. We're still getting it at a discount, even though just because it had a blemish at some point and we're going to 
buy that mortgage. We're going to manage it in our portfolio. And then we're going to pay our investors eight, nine percent as a result. That's the business model. So for an investor to be attracted to this type of fund that you're offering, is there a minimum amount they have to invest or how and a minimum term they have to be in there for? Uh, How does it work? Mm -hmm. Yes. So it's set up as a um, SEC uh, Security and Exchange Commission's what we call a 506C Reg D fund which means that the investor has to be accredited and the accredited standards in the U.S. are if there's a husband and wife and there's joint tax filings, they have to earn at least 300000 per year, U.S. dollars, or if they're a single individual and they file that way, 200000 or they have to have net worth of $1 million U.S., And so if they meet that criteria, then they can come into the fund and the minimum investment into the fund is 50,000 US dollars. All right. It sounds um, quite simple. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, if you're accredited, I mean, you know, you're accredited, you know, uh, hit me up and, you know, we'd love to have a discussion that way. But, you know, I think I would venture that probably, you know, part of your audience is non-accredited. That they're like, well, that's great, you know, Martin and Anne, you know, if you're accredited, but I'm not there yet. And so that's where you should be self-educating. You know, I've written five books, four of which are in, involved this mortgage note industry. Last year, I wrote Cashflow Dojo. And, and really, so, you know, one should be educating themselves as much because it's a survival issue at this point. We're hitting inflation now like we've never seen. It's coming and things are going to go up in price. If you think things are expensive now, just wait, you know, six months, wait a year and so on. And, um, you know, if you're barely making it now, it's it's going to be a crushing blow. So it's mandatory at this point that folks should really be taking charge of their finances. All right. So can you give us some tips then from your Mojo book? Yeah. Invest in assets that cash flow and you can control. That's really where it's at. You know, you should invest in yourself is, you know, another way you can kind of look at it. You should be looking at what trades you possess, what company you're working for now. How can you increase the income to that company as a result of increasing income for yourself? Every employee on my team has certain other ways they can earn additional income in addition to their salary. Because uh, I want folks to have a sense of empowerment that they can earn as much as they'd like to see come into their into their bank account. And so, you know, I would say just read as much as you can. But, you know, I would shy away from investing for appreciation, which is what most people do with the stock market and, and other forms of investing. They invest, they want to buy, you know, all these sexy things like Apple stock and Bitcoin and they want to buy it at you know this amount of dollars and then have it have it appreciate to you know z amount of dollars at a later point well you can't eat off of that it's not going to uh, put gas in your car so no. everything you invest in should result in producing cash flow for yourself it's very encouraging that you say what you have said i personally probably have lost the most money on the stock market and have made the most money through uh, real estate investing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because you took control. I mean, you saw the asset. You're able to perform your own due diligence. You're able to control rents or control the outcome to some extent. Obviously, there's external factors. But anytime you have control over the process, anytime that your exit involves some type of cash flow or, or capital gains to yourself, I think you're always going to do better than if you invest with some other company whereby you'll never meet the CEO, you'll never meet the board of directors, and you're just going to pray that they're doing the right thing for you. Yeah. And before we finish up, could you talk to us about how you handle economic downturns? That's in your notes. So you must be experienced with that as well. We don't buy the assets at par. We buy them at a discount. So actually economic downturns, there's actually more inventory and the discounts go deeper. 
So as a result, so actually um, right now in this whole panacea of a marketplace that we're existing in, actually now is actually our economic downturn. Prices are, are up for us and inventory's down. Uh-huh. But we're still maintaining trades and whatnot based on relationships, but yeah, it's, it's, it's kind of an inverse thing. It's very challenging that what we've been through the last year and a half, and I imagine it could be another year and a half before things settle down. And it must be uh, reassuring to know that you have got cash coming in each month to support yourself. Yeah, next few years is going to be a very different challenge for most folks with inflation because it's here. It's going to hit us hard. It's long overdue. And um, I just hope folks, you know, take heed to build as much cash flow as you can on a monthly basis. Right. Because um, I find it interesting that you talk about inflation because the interest rates have been so low for so long that you can see a, a trend coming, can you? Yeah, I see it. And what if I'm wrong? You know, you're still going to be at a stronger point, right? Because you've made all these additional steps to better yourself financially. So mm-hmm. I hope I'm wrong and and that would, you'll be all the more better as a result. So just run us through the books that you have written uh, before <laughs> we finish up because it's quite impressive. You've been very prolific. Thank you. So Node Investing Made Easier and Real Estate Node Investing Mentorship Node Investing Fundamentals. These are all how-to guides for individuals looking to build a note business for themselves. I've also, based on my past life with government contracting, I wrote a book, Secrets to Winning Government Contracts, and that's actually the bestseller. So everyone wants to sell to the federal government for some reason. Um, (laughs) And so last year I wrote From the Heart, Cashflow Dojo, Building Your Home on Multiple Streams of Income. Because um, at this point last year, this is when I became concerned for a lot of people because I do talk to a lot of people based on what I do. I just became more concerned that that just so much in middle America and all across the world, they're, they're not positioned for what's to come. Okay. Well, it's been a pleasure having you on the show and it's been very, very interesting. It's, well, it's a credit. It's amazing what you have created something completely different and you're benefiting other investors to to get a, a monthly cash flow without having to be the person that puts themselves at risk, I suppose. But it's amazing that you can make money in lots of different ways. Yes, absolutely. Thanks very much for being on the show and, and sharing your knowledge with us today. It's been Martin Signs from Bequest Funds and it's been very, very interesting and it's been a pleasure having you here. Thank you for having me.